So if you've been getting involved into the Orthodox Christian faith, you may have noticed that throughout church history there have been various ecumenical councils. And these ecumenical councils can be very hard to keep track of for those who are new to the faith. Hmm, don't you wish that there was this great video that would explain all seven ecumenical councils? Well, here you go. But Jason, you say, what even is an ecumenical council? Well buddy, let me tell you. So basically, an ecumenical council is this big huge meeting of all bishops in the world to rule on a theological dispute. Understood? Fantastic. So, without further ado, let's begin! So in total, there are seven ecumenical councils. Each of these councils were convened to refute a specific heresy. Well, what's heresy? In theology, the definition of heresy is false teaching that contradicts the truth. Another thing I should mention is the difference between orthodox and heterodox. We call ourselves the orthodox church because the word orthodox means right belief. Orthodox beliefs are correct and safe. Heresy, on the other hand, falls under the category of heterodox. The word heterodox means other belief. False doctrines that are heterodox are extremely dangerous. We should remind ourselves of the dangers of heresy and false teaching, along with the importance of theology. What makes heresy so dangerous is that when heresy spreads, it can split the church. This is why a lot of Paul's epistles are refuting false doctrines and trying to prevent schisms. As you can see, in scripture, the Apostle Paul says, let there be no divisions among you. You see, theology is important because theology is the study of our Christian faith. This is why ecumenical councils were necessary. Because you see, whenever a heresy would emerge, the based orthodox saints would refute the heresy in an ecumenical council. So the first ecumenical council was the first council of Nicaea, which was called in 325 AD by the Roman Emperor Constantine. At this council, a heresy called Arianism was condemned. What's Arianism? Well, Arianism was this heresy started by this guy from Egypt called Arius. So basically, Arius denied the divinity of Christ by claiming that Jesus was not God and was only a created being. Obviously, this goes against what scripture teaches, since the Bible clearly affirms the divinity of Christ. So Jesus is God. But wait a minute, the divinity of Christ is an extremely important tenet of Christianity. Obviously, this can't fly that the Arians are denying the divinity of Christ. So in response to the Arian heresy, all the bishops from the Orthodox Church came together at the Council of Nicaea. At the council, Arius had a very lively debate with the defenders of orthodoxy, which included St. Athanasius, St. Nicholas, and St. Alexander. After hearing all of the arguments, the bishops at the First Council of Nicaea made their ruling. They ruled that the divinity of Christ is true and Arianism to be heretical, and Arius was placed under an anathema. Now the second ecumenical council was the first council of Constantinople. This council was called in 381 by the Roman Emperor Theodosius I. So the first council of Constantinople condemned the heresy of Macedonianism. Wait a minute, what's Macedonianism? Well you know how Arianism denies the divinity of the Son? Well Macedonianism denies the divinity of the Holy Spirit. This heresy was condemned at the first council of Constantinople. Moving on, so the next three ecumenical councils have to do with the nature of Christ. So, as you can see, in Christianity, Jesus Christ has two natures, a divine nature and a human nature. So you might be wondering, what's the relationship between the human nature and the divine nature? Well, let me tell you. So basically, to answer this question, a few schools of thought emerged. According to the Chalcedonian position, the divine nature and the human nature are united in a hypostatic union. The Nestorians believe that the divine natures and human natures are separate, while the Monophysites believe the natures are blended to form a new nature. Or in other words, Chalcedonians think that the natures are united, Nestorians think that they're divided, while the Monophysites think that they're blended. United, divided, blended. United, divided, blended. 
The Orthodox Church teaches that the Chalcedonian position is correct. As you can see, the Chalcedonian position is correct since it's clearly taught in Scripture. The divine nature and the human nature are united in a hypostatic union. Christ is therefore both fully God and fully man. The next couple of councils condemn the Nestorian and Monophysite positions. So the Nestorian heresy was condemned at the Third Ecumenical Council, the Council of Ephesus, which was called in 431 by the Roman Emperor Theodosius II. The Monophysite heresy, on the other hand, was condemned at the Fourth Ecumenical Council, the Council of Chalcedon, which was called in 451 by the Roman Emperor Marcion. The Nestorian heresy was also condemned the second time, just for good measure. So the Fifth Ecumenical Council, the Second Council of Constantinople, was called in 553 by the Roman Emperor Justinian I, and it condemned Nestorianism for a second time. So, as you can see, the Hypostatic Union is correct, but some people, well, just don't understand how it works. As you can see, the correct understanding of the Hypostatic Union is as follows. Each of the two natures of Christ has its own will and its own energy. So Christ has a divine energy, a human energy, a divine will, and a human will. Christ acts through both his divine energy and his human energy. Jesus has two wills, a human will and a divine will. The human will of Christ is in perfect submission to the divine will of Christ. Unfortunately, there are some heretics who deny this. The heresy of monoenergism denies that there are two different energies of Christ, and instead asserts that there is only one energy. Likewise, the heresy of monothelitism denies that there are two different wills of Christ, and instead asserts that there is only one will. Monothelitism is basically the two natures but one will viewpoint. Clearly, monoenergism and monothelitism are heresies that need to be condemned. These two heresies were condemned at the Sixth Ecumenical Council, the Third Council of Constantinople. This council lasted from 680 till 681 and was called by the Roman Emperor Constantine IV. So last but not least, we have the Seventh Ecumenical Council that condemned iconoclasm. What's iconoclasm? Well, if you've ever been inside an Orthodox church, you would know that us Orthodox Christians love our icons. But uh-oh, some people are extremely angry about icons. These people are called iconoclasts. Iconoclasts are opposed to icon veneration. This heresy is called iconoclasm. In response to the iconoclasts, the heresy of iconoclasm was condemned at the Seventh Ecumenical Council the Second Council of Nicaea, which was called in 787 by the Roman Empress Irene of Athens. This is the last ecumenical council of the Orthodox Church. Thank you all for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit the bell. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day. I just wanted to let you all know that this video is part of a new series called Orthodoxy Explained where I teach the Orthodox faith through short, fun, and entertaining videos just like this one. Make sure to subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss the next episode. Also guys, don't forget to go to an Orthodox church. You can find an Orthodox church near you on this website, orthodoxyinamerica.org. The link to it will be in the description below. I hope to see you all in the next video. I'm Jason Orthodox. Peace!